Okay, signal generators or waveform generators, uh, they go by both names, uh, are the analog equivalent of the pattern generator on the digital side. And what these pieces of test equipment let you do is create signals, uh, very common shapes and sizes, and then give you all kinds of uh, parameters to change to alter those shapes a little bit from from their normal so uh, generating a sine wave a square wave a sawtooth wave those are common things that uh, you see occur so we're gonna do the analog discovery to USB based test equipment signal generator called wave gen and it has a lot of options it has some little bit of limitations but you can buy benchtop waveform generators or signal generators also uh, they have a tendency to only have one or two channels and the interface to change the parameters of the signals are a little bit hard to to deal with um, so let's start that software up I have the analog discovery 2 software running and here is the waveform generator I'm gonna click on that to start it and also at the same time, um, the waveform generator, need, we need to see what the outputs look like. So we're going to start the scope up too. So we, we haven't, may or may not have done things with the scope. Both these are rather sophisticated interfaces. Uh, we're going to use the scope. Um, we're going to add it and we're going to use it. But uh, we not necessarily going to review its operation as we go. So I'm back to the clicking on the waveform generator to select it. Um, there's some common interface things or things that um, make sense. There's a run all button and when we hit run all it runs both of these channels uh, at the same time and if I do a stop it stops them all. I can run them separately uh, by clicking the run button without the other. I can disable them, but when I hit the run all, it'll enable them. So you should probably fool with that uh, to make sure you understand how that works. I'm going to leave them all enabled, and I'm going to leave them running also. Uh, you can see that indicated here. The other thing that might be uh, a little different for you, uh, when you bring up the software, it comes up in the setup that it last was there, so you might not get the standard. If you pull down on this channels menu by left clicking here, you can see I can have channel 1 and channel 2, or just one channel. Okay, a little bit sluggish here, sorry about that. Uh, we'll put both channels back on, um, so we can show some features as it goes. Now. That's great. Uh, that gets us at least started uh, with things, but what we probably want to do is know how to hook this thing up. And let's take a look at um, the setup. Not very exciting. Uh, this is what it looks like. And you can see I have this on a breadboard. And all I do is bring to this common point on a breadboard so that I can make connections for the scope and the signal generator. Um, the scope channel and the signal generator channel that I'm using. Here's the second channel and the second channel of the scope and then here are the common leads that are there too. So that's pretty cool. Um, pretty easy to do as far as setup goes. Uh, you probably want to think well what channels are what um, so if I go to get a pinout uh, so that we can see it the scope channels are one plus and one minus this is a differential input so this is hooked to the ground and this is hooked to the signal that you want to measure here's channel two of the scope and W1 is waveform generator input number one or output number one and waveform generator two is W2. Uh, these are common ground so you have to hook the ground up to there. So those are the connections that I showed you that I've already made on the on the breadboard so that we can see our signals as they operate. Uh, the other thing while we're here the waveform generator software um, has a help file uh, might be a little bit tough to find. I just usually search for Digilent Analog Discovery 2 Waveform Generator, and I find it. Um, it's here. 
and when you don't know how to do something if you come down through here and look it'll help you out so you can see those two links at the top of the screen and that should help you in case there so let's go back to the software once again this is the waveform software that runs the analog discovery and this is where we're going to spend most of our time so there's a lot of options there's a lot of modes and i'm not going to show you all of them and we're going to stay with the simple offerings and signals so uh, first thing there's this pull down here that says simple basic custom play sweep and modulation for choices if i select another one um, after a little bit of delay there you'll see my interface change simple and basic have all the same options the interface for basic just a little bit more expanded and they'll claim it's a little bit more easier to use so um, the other options in here we'll take a look at one more of these custom uh, as we move along here and you can see uh, that I can have this set up channel one set up for basic and I can have channel two set up for simple here are the channel designations and they also indicate what pin the signals are going out on so that gets you started there um, a signal generator you can choose all kinds of waveforms if I click here I get a sine wave and you can see my preview window change um, if I click here I get a square wave and a square wave is not the same signal that you put on a digital IC you can see this is the zero volt reference level and these are going from plus to minus now I can alter the settings so it doesn't do that and I could create a signal I could uh, apply to the input of a, a logic gate but this certainly isn't one here with plus and minus voltages um, if they're too high that might damage the IC there's triangular waves there's ramp up waves there's ramp down waves there's noise uh, signals that you can get there is a pulse and that is uh, more in line with a digital signal it's a square wave uh, that actually is um, on its low point is zero volts um, all kinds of options in here and that's more options than we normally see on a signal generator but that is the purpose of a signal generator so I'm gonna pick a square wave for up here I'm gonna leave this in basic mode and you can see I have the same options down here in simple mode the the interface looks a little different and that's there so um, I'm gonna drop this onto a sine wave that's a pretty common signal for a technician to want to generate remember uh, signal generators usually in that test and learning environment you create a signal that you want to apply to something and see what happens or you want to exercise a, a component or a piece of equipment you would come here to generate a signal the one limitation of a USB based device is that the amplitude here um, if I pull on these choices and I look I can only go plus and minus 5 volts and that's pretty low but I can't generate more than the voltage that I put on the piece of equipment that's a pretty general rule it's uh, not always true but pretty general and desktop signal generators can generate signals with higher amplitudes um, as, a, as a general statement so um, like I said there's all kinds of options in here and I do it but right now I have a square wave up here you can see I can set the frequency um, I can set the amplitude that I want I can set the offset voltage and that means uh, if, what voltage levels I'm going to come above and below the zero volt level we'll do that very shortly I can set the symmetry of the signal how much time it's going to be on versus how much time it's going to be off or in a plus voltage level or a minus voltage level and I can set the phase uh, angle for there so I have these up I'm gonna click on making these run that's a run all and we can see that went green I'm gonna go to the scope and I'm gonna click the scope in run mode and if we go back to our waveform generator we generated a square wave and we generated a sine wave on uh, channel 2 scope 
is showing us exactly what happened there. I'm going to move this trigger up so that I have it. You can see I have a sine wave down here and I can have a square wave up here. So let's go back to the waveform generator and fool a little bit with some of these options. Uh, let's change the symmetry a little bit. Uh, I can do it through a pull down or I can do it uh, through this slider and then just slide it along. You can see it's changing the percentage of the time that it's uh, in the plus voltage range is minus to the minus voltage range and this is a preview of the signal it's only happening one time over here in the scope I have that continuously gone out I can see the the changes that I made so I have a very short time that it's in the the plus voltage range and a little bit longer time that it's in the minus voltage range and that particular percentage that I had for symmetry was 23 percent if I change the offset voltage, uh, you can see if I'm changing the offset voltage in the positive direction, you can see that this is all zero to minus volts now. So if I go back to the scope, uh, this is the zero volt uh, level here, and I've offset this by five volts. You can see that what I'm at anywhere from about uh, one volt here the whole way up to six volts with that offset that I set up um, if I reset that offset back to zero uh, I can type it in or I can pick it from this drop down menu you can see that my uh, voltage now is centered across plus and minus if I go back to the scope again this is the zero point here. I'm going to move that up so it's out of the signal the other way. You can see that half the signal is above and half the below. That's what the offset does for you. It puts a, a DC voltage on here and poses it on top of here and pushes the signal up or down and it's there. So if I go back to the waveform generator, I go back into my simple interface for the sine wave and I change my amplitude to two volts. You can see that now I'm going from plus 2 to minus 2. If I go to my scope, um, that actually has changed this signal. Um, I'm going to move this up out of the way. It actually has changed this signal, um, the amplitude of the signal, and it's there. So I can come down here in the scope and I can change my volts per division to 2 volts per division and that'll separate the signals out a little bit and if I center this right on that line each division is 2 volts so we can see we're going plus 2 in this range and minus 2 in that range. Pretty cool stuff. I, you really gotta get in here and play with these signals and fool with them. This is just a very basic introduction uh, to what a waveform generator can do for you. Um, these other different types and shapes of signals uh, can be exciting. Uh, you should fool around with them. Uh, that's all. We'll uh, pick this up on a more advanced topics uh, where we can generate custom waveforms, but for now that's what a signal generator does.